Jezebel, a notorious figure in biblical narratives, was married to Ahab, the king of Israel, whose rule is detailed in the Old Testament. The story tells us that Ahab was not only a monarch of dubious reputation but is considered, according to the chronicles of the first book of Kings, as the most disastrous of all leaders who occupied the Israeli throne, surpassing in wickedness all his predecessors during his 22-year reign. This period was enough for Ahab to sell chaos and destruction, marking an era of spiritual and moral decline in the history of Israel. Ahab, the son of Omri, ascended to the throne of Israel in the 38th year of the reign of Asa, monarch of Judah. During his governance in Samaria, which lasted 22 years, Ahab distinguished himself by committing iniquities in the sight and patience of the Lord, on an unprecedented scale compared with his predecessors. The Bible recounts how this act of evil seemed to be trivial for him, especially when following the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Ahab's marital alliance with Jezebel, daughter of Ethbal, king of the Sidonians, was not only symbolic of a political union but also marked the beginning of a deep spiritual downfall. Jezebel, coming from Phoenician royalty and whose name represents significant cultural contrasts, being spring in Phoenician and trash in Hebrew, used her position to influence Ahab decisively and promote her own malevolent agendas, with little or no effort to persuade the king towards her designs. Jezebel's influence was such that she convinced Ahab to introduce and worship Baal, a pagan god associated with nature. This decision not only represented a deviation from faith in Yahweh, but also set a dangerous precedent within Israel. The queen sought not only political power, but also spiritual authority, going so far as to eliminate those who dared to question her authority or faith. Under her mandate, most of the prophets of Yahweh were executed, marking the beginning of an era of persecution against the faithful to God, a campaign unprecedented in its fervor and brutality. Jezebel spared no efforts to maintain her idolatrous cult, surrounding herself with 450 prophets who served Baal and 400 prophets of the groves dedicated to Astarte, who enjoyed her protection and provision. The first book of Kings, chapters 16 and 18, details these actions and the divine response through the prophet Elijah, who rose as a bulwark against the idolatry promoted by Jezebel and Ahab. Elijah, without any book written in his name but with a story widely covered in the book of Kings, distinguished himself by his direct confrontation with the prophets of Baal, a culminating episode that demonstrated the supremacy of Yahweh over pagan deities. The competition on Mount Carmel, where Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal to invoke divine fire to consume a sacrifice, is one of the most dramatic and revealing stories in the Bible, showing the power of faith and divine intervention in the face of apostasy and idolatry. This extensive account not only broadens the understanding of Ahab and Jezebel's characters within the biblical narrative but also offers a detailed view of the spiritual and social consequences of their actions. Through this story, the continuous struggle between fidelity to God and the temptation to follow idolatrous practices, a recurring theme in the history of the people of Israel, is revealed. The episode of the challenge between Elijah and the prophets of Baal is one of the most dramatic and significant in the history of Israel, marking a decisive moment in the confrontation between the worship of Yahweh and the idolatry promoted by Jezebel and Ahab. Elijah, with a mix of cunning and profound faith, proposed a public challenge to demonstrate the supremacy of God over Baal. To this end, he urged the prophets of Baal to build an altar and prepare a sacrifice without lighting the fire, promising to do the same. However, Elijah raised the stakes by pouring water abundantly over his altar, which would humanly make the ignition of the sacrifice by natural means impossible. This act not only demonstrated his confidence in divine power but also served to humiliate the prophets of Baal, whose efforts to invoke their god were fruitless. 
Elijah's irony, suggesting that Baal was distracted or unavailable, exacerbated the tension and expectation of the attendees. When finally divine fire descended, consuming Elijah's sacrifice, the water, and even the stones of the altar, the demonstration was so incontrovertible that Israel had no choice but to acknowledge the authority of Yahweh. This victory over the prophets of Baal not only affirmed faith in the God of Israel but also marked the beginning of the fall of Jezebel and Ahab. However, Jezebel's reaction to the defeat of her prophets was swift and threatening, leading Elijah to flee to Horeb, fearing for his life. Despite his great victory, Elijah found himself emotionally and spiritually exhausted, a state that was addressed by divine intervention through an angel who provided him with food and comfort. This encounter reaffirmed Elijah's mission and prepared the way for the continuity of his prophetic work through his successor, Elisha. Elisha, by asking for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, was requesting not only to succeed him but also to amplify the work started by his mentor. This request symbolized a desire to deepen the influence and impact of the prophetic message in Israel, a mission he would carry forward with notable dedication and power. Parallelly, the narrative of Naboth and his vineyard illustrates another aspect of Jezebel's malice and Ahab's weakness. Ahab's covetousness for a vineyard adjacent to his palace in Jezreel, and his inability to obtain it from Naboth, who refused to sell his inheritance out of respect for the divine law, reveals the moral corruption at the heart of Ahab's reign. Jezebel's intervention, falsely accusing Naboth of blasphemy to justify his execution and seize the vineyard, underscores her willingness to commit atrocious acts to satisfy Ahab's desires. This story not only exhibits the injustice and violence that characterize their role, but also the deep disdain for the sanctity of inheritance and divine law. Elijah's confrontation with Ahab and Naboth's vineyard, prophesying the fall of his dynasty as punishment for his iniquity, reinforces the prophet's role as a voice of divine justice. These events not only condemn the idolatry and injustice promoted by Jezebel and Ahab but also demonstrate God's incessant mercy and providence toward Israel, ensuring guidance and protection through figures like Elijah and Elisha, who remain steadfast in their commitment to restoring faith and justice amidst a turbulent era. The intrigue and drama surrounding the story of Naboth and his vineyard, as narrated in the first book of Kings, highlight not only the greed and corruption in Ahab's reign but also the cunning and malice of Jezebel in its crudest form. The plot unfolds when Jezebel, determined to satisfy her husband Ahab's desire to acquire Naboth's vineyard, devises a Machiavellian plan that underscores her willingness to manipulate and transgress any moral boundary to achieve her ends. Jezebel's plan begins with the issuance of letters in Ahab's name, using the royal seal to authenticate her orders. In these letters, she ordered the elders and nobles of Jezreel to proclaim a fast and position Naboth in a place of honor, only to be vilely betrayed. The inclusion of two false witnesses, described as scoundrels, to raise accusations of blasphemy against Naboth, illustrates the depth of depravity Jezebel was willing to reach. The execution of Naboth, based on false accusations, reflects not only the injustice perpetrated against an innocent man but also the abuse of power and manipulation of the judicial system for personal ends. The news of Naboth's death is received by Jezebel with a mix of satisfaction and pragmatism, as she quickly informs Ahab that the vineyard he so desired was now unoccupied and ready for the taking. This act of appropriation not only is a testimony of the contempt for life and the rights of others but also a flagrant violation of the divine commandments that govern inheritance and property in Israel. Divine intervention through the prophet Elijah brings a severe condemnation and prophetic warnings about the consequences of these acts. 
the divine judgment announced to Ahab and Jezebel not only forecasts their downfall and the destruction of their lineage, but also establishes a principle of divine justice in response to human injustice. The mention that dogs would lick up Ahab's blood in the same place where Naboth was unjustly killed and that Jezebel would face a similar fate underscores the notion that no act of wickedness will go unpunished. Ahab's reaction to Elijah's words, marked by superficial repentance and temporary humility, reflects a moment of recognition of his guilt. However, the divine promise to postpone the calamity until after his reign suggests temporary mercy but also ensures that justice will ultimately prevail. The sequel to this story sees the eventual fall of Jezebel and the end of Ahab's reign, fulfilling Elijah's prophecies. The ascension of Elisha as Elijah's successor and the anointing of Jehu as the new king of Israel, destined to eradicate Baal worship and avenge the blood of the prophets and servants of God shed by Jezebel, marks the beginning of an era of radical change. Jehu, characterized by his determination and decisive action, carries out the divine order, triggering events that culminate in the eradication of Ahab's house and the fulfillment of divine justice on Jezebel and her followers. This extensive narrative not only underscores the complexity of the characters and events within the biblical account, but also presents universal themes of justice, power, corruption, and redemption. Through the actions of Jezebel and Ahab, and the divine responses to these, we are reminded of the importance of integrity, justice, and fidelity to moral and spiritual principles in the exercise of power and authority. Jezebel's fall, recounted in the second book of Kings, encapsulates not only the fulfillment of a divine prophecy but also the tragic end of a queen who became synonymous with wickedness, cruelty, and manipulation in the biblical narrative. This episode marks the climax of the struggle between Baal worship, promoted by Jezebel and Ahab, and fidelity to Yahweh, defended by prophets like Elijah and Elisha, and carried out by Jehu. When Jehu approached Jezreel to confront Jezebel, she, anticipating his arrival, meticulously prepared for the encounter. Her act of dressing elegantly, painting her face, and adorning her head, while challenging Jehu from the window, not only reflects her vanity and pride, but also her final defiance in the face of impending judgment. Jehu's response, asking his eunuchs to throw her out of the window, and his subsequent refusal to bury her with honors, dramatically fulfill Elijah's prophecy about her fate. The death of Jezebel, and the fact that only her skull, feet, and palms of her hands were found, symbolized the total disappearance of her legacy and power, as had been predicted. This act not only represents a victory over the idolatry and moral evil that Jezebel had fostered in Israel, but also a divine warning about the consequences of straying from the ways of Yahweh. Jezebel has been immortalized in biblical history not only as Ahab's wife, but as the embodiment of idolatrous practices and corrupt leadership. Her name has transcended the biblical context to become a term used to describe individuals characterized by manipulation, seduction, and wickedness. The mention of Jezebel in the book of Revelation as a false prophetess who deceives the faithful underscores her role as an archetype of corruption and negative influence within communities of faith. Jezebel's marital alliance with Ahab, highlighted by its especially disastrous nature due to the combination of political power and the promotion of idolatry, marked a turning point in the history of Israel. The resistance of the prophets and divine intervention through figures like Jehu reflect the ongoing conflict between fidelity to God and the temptation to follow other gods. The story of Jezebel, from her rise to her fall, offers a powerful lesson on the consequences of iniquity and the importance of integrity and fidelity to moral and spiritual principles. Through her narrative, we are reminded of God's sovereignty, the inevitability of divine justice, and the ultimate fate of those who oppose the commandments and will of Yahweh. And so, 
we reach the end of this presentation. Thank you for being part of our channel, a space where we seek to share wisdom and reflections on faith. I send you a warm greeting and a strong hug. Until next time, and may God bless you.